What's up, fellow marketers? It's George with that Champagne here, and today, together with Aptica, we're sharing a lot about successful user acquisition strategies. We're gonna talk a lot about mobile game marketing and how here at that Champagne we do that. And a little bit, we'll also talk about ChatGPT, Midjourney, and other AI stuff. So I'm more than pleased to welcome you here in this lesson, and let's start. In the world of mobile marketing, the importance of data-driven approach cannot be overstated. In my sense, performance marketing is much like playing competitive shooters, such as PUBG Mobile, Stand of Two, or Counter-Strike. Let's say we have two different players. One is a very well-experienced guy, a diehard with 6,000 hours of playtime behind his back. And on the other hand, we have a novice player with zero hours of playing in such genre, and he knows nothing about such games. With the case with the first guy, he has invested dozens of time into studying different maps, different strategies, and he knows a lot about this game. He analyzes his allies and his enemies during the first seconds of the match. He understands what weapons do his allies have and how to make him effective within the team. And each match he starts he starts very well informed. And so uh, comparing it to mobile marketing, I would say he's using a data-driven approach. When it comes to analyzing the game of the second player, who is a novice, I would say that his approach is more like intuition-driven. So all of his actions during the first seconds of match are quite random. He acts the way like what I see is where I go. And so the result of his match is purely random as well. The intuition marketing, even though uh, relies heavily a lot on such things as luck and simple circumstances, doesn't bring you a huge result in the long term. If we try to understand the difference between these two players on the long run of, say, 100 matches of a row, we will understand that a data-driven approach brings you much more wins compared to an intuition-driven. Transforming that to mobile marketing, an intuition-based approach will obviously give you probably the same results in the short term, because we should consider such things as circumstances and luck. However, using data-driven approach in the long run means that you can analyze not just the real-time data you achieve and your gut feelings and other things, but also you take into consideration a retrospective of your previous experience which helps you avoiding different common mistakes and help you to be more effective in the long run. The data-driven approach works simply as a navigator for both creative production and the marketing team as well. What's more interesting, it correlates a lot with the philosophy of the games, because when we do the games, when we create them, a lot of resources are being invested into creating a common sense of progression, because uh, this way the player is uh, being entertained and engaged within the products uh, as much as possible, and similar to the marketers as well. We are all humans after all, and uh, while the top management is focused on creating some long-term goals, such as achieving X amount of revenue per month or bringing your IP to the very top chart of Aptica or any other analytical tool, marketers on the field should understand how progression goes, how effective they are in achieving those goals and how the KPIs that they set will really solve this issue, will really help them to move forward and to win at the very end. This is where A-B testing comes in handy. We will try to visualize the idea of the A-B testing using this at Creative, but what I'm trying to say is A-B testing gives you multiple options to build a bridge between your current LTV stage and the very final destination you're trying to achieve. <laughs> yes! Let's imagine you're facing a struggle of choosing between two different end cards. And uh, this is very important because end cards can give you a significant difference of testing uh, for the CPI metric, for example. And instead of choosing using your gut feeling or organizing a joint Zoom call for the team, what you can do is simply create two end cards, turn them into banners and set them to the marketing campaign. By managing this marketing campaign, which can be very short, you can understand the exact idea of an IPM and CTR for each and uh, every particular end card. And uh, as one of them will give you a significant result, 
can choose these end cards and be sure that this end card will perform its best compared to the other ones. And this is what I think an A-B testing is for. By relying on the metrics and data collected using the A-B tests, you can confidently identify each of the next steps on your marketing campaigns and obviously make them more effective. As we are talking a lot about different metaphors during this lesson, I would like to compare using A-B testing and data-driven approach in common to how pilots drive their planes during the landing stage. Even though the visibility of the nature can be good, the flight in common should be instrumented as it obviously brings you more effectiveness and keeps you avoiding the fail. Numbers literally guide the creative production process. Here at that Champagne, I hope we've sharpened a lot the workflow we are using, and I'm more than pleased to share it with you in order to bring more value. Say, so we're faced with the challenge of defining a new top performing idea while the old one is still there and didn't burn out. At the beginning of this task, the process is quite common and it's crucial to have a very experienced team. And they start with the defining the marketing trends by using different tools such as Aptica. As soon as the most performing trends are defined, you better pick out of them the most promising ones. And this is where our designers obviously use a so-called chat GPT inside of their brains. They have trained their neural net by watching hundreds and thousands of different videos. And what they do is that they see the patterns of the promising techniques and mechanics of these videos. We come up with scenarios for 10 ideas, we do videos, and then we put them into testing. What happens next is a bit of our know-how, and this is something that is quite unique as I've never seen it being used by our clients or other agencies. We use these 10 videos and the results of their tests in order to build a creative production pipeline a so-called performance funnel. We take those 10 bits and put them into a common workspace, a common board, and uh, see the results of these videos, not just in particular for each of them, but we can zoom out and see the whole picture in common. And then, as soon as we do that, we use a simple 70% rule, which tells us that out of those 10 videos, the ones that show the 70% performance of the original top performing champion, We'll go to the stage two. Each of the videos that we have in this funnel is something like a creative production puzzle for us. They all consist of different beginnings, middles and ends. They all consist of different characters, scenes we put them in and different end cards, etc. So what we do next to squeeze up the performance is we simply take the beginning of the video A and combine it with the middle of the video B. We, for example, use the character from the video C and put him into the scene of the video D. We do that because before, on the very first test, the video A showed us, say, the best IPM and the video C showed us, say, the best CTR. So we're trying to combine the findings we got from both videos in order to have good results in both metrics and their variations. This way, we're constantly squeezing up the overall performance for the games we're working in and uh, it works well for soft launching them or, say, scaling them from a simple 10k budget of ad spend per month up to six-figure ad budget that is being managed with the several channels simultaneously. The debate about AI is still raging, but let me tell you why inside of Ed Champagne it just enhances the creative production rather than replicates our design force. Sure, some basic processes can be handed over to artificial intelligence, but it just means that our creative production team can focus more on unleashing their creativity and on using the AI as a basis and work in tandem with it rather than competing with it. We are huge fans of tools like ChatGPT, Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, and they are used a lot. So let me tell you a little bit about how we do that. Let's take ChatGPT for example. It is a very progressive tool for working with different sorts of texts and inside of Action Paint team it is widely used for things like ideation or creating some scenarios. It doesn't mean that ChatGPT can really make a good scenario out of the box, but still it can be a good basis. It can become a great assistant for our creative producers and they can use these plots and dive deep into them to 
polish them and make the final scenario based on the neural nets that I've mentioned before. When it comes to working with mid-journey and stable diffusion, they are great allies for us in working with the huge volumes of different static banners. As I've mentioned, we are often building different performance marketing funnels and in order to test various characters and uh, backgrounds, sometimes it's more cost and time effective to get a lot of the different banners instead of creating the videos. The results will be approximately the same, but the time to cost and time to produce will be significantly lower. So when it comes to talk about AI in common and how it's going to replicate the whole creative production process, I would say it's not going to happen in the nearest future. Economically speaking, leveraging AI brings you at least several valuable points. First of all, it obviously helps you to lower the amount of workload you put on shoulders of your illustrators and helps them to simply focus on more creative tasks. On the second hand, it helps you to at least get more information while building those uh, performance-based marketing funnels that I've mentioned before. Back in the old days, we used to work a lot with different videos to, to simply test like characters and backgrounds. And now instead of doing videos, we can produce like dozens or hundreds of different static banners designed by Midjourney and polished by our designers to make sure that a certain amount of information can affect the effectiveness of the marketing campaign. Thank you very much guys for watching this video. I hope this lesson was valuable to you. I wish you really have a lot of marketing success and if you have any more questions please reach out directly to us by email or our website or simply ask Aptica and they will transfer these questions to us. Thank you very much for your attention again. See you soon.